Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of The Pickleball Crew. We are a group of pickleball fanatics based in southeast Louisiana and are passionate about all things pickleball everywhere. Our focus is to inform, acknowledge those who help build the game regionally, and promote tournaments in our area. We do our best to present this with a love of the sport, a sense of humor, and a lot of fun. So join Vicki Wynn, Ken Wynn, Jeff Yusha, and me, Bud Klein, in our latest episode. We are glad you are along for the ride. Hey, everybody. This is the Pickleball Crew, and this year we're at the annual Hallow Wheels Pickleball and Tennis Tournament at the Breck. It's Highland Park. Highland Park Breck uh, Tennis and Pickleball Facility. Uh, we've got lots and lots of video today for you all. Uh, some good pickleball. Ken yesterday took a silver and Jeff took a silver yeah. in their men's division. So congratulations to them. So yesterday was men's doubles and today is mixed doubles and Sunday will be ladies doubles. Right. And uh, there's, there's so many teams. As you'll find out with an interview, they had to spread it out to three days of pickleball. So it's a, a lot of people, over 350, she says. 350, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I didn't realize it, but uh, Tech said that every year he rotates the men's and women's yes. doubles. Yes. Oh, okay. I remember because last year Vicky played on Friday, I played on Sunday. And it's, it's spot mix is always on Saturday. But the nice thing is with that many players, they're staggered starts. Now, Friday was 8 a.m. and noon because they had opening ceremonies at 5 p.m. And that was actually a sight to see. That oh, was, it was. We got some Wait great till you see the video there. of that. Amazing. Now today, mix, there's 8 a.m., 11, and 2.30. And so we'll wrap up probably around 6 o'clock. At tomorrow's women's, and it's, I know there's an 8 a.m. and Vicky's at 11. 11. So there may be a 2.30 also I'm tomorrow. Sure. I'm not yeah. sure. A lot of pickleball. But, but we were on the court. Our group was on the court from 8 a.m. till we finished at one. We were the last match at 1:30. How long were you on the court yesterday? A long time. <laughs> you were the last. <laughs> we were. We were. I think we got off about. Was it five? Five. I was going to say five. Five. Yeah. Five fifteen. So you started at 2:30 yeah. or a little early? No, we were supposed to start at 12. 12. And we ended up starting about 12:30, 12:45. Right. Yeah, yeah. So he had the same thing. So you were on, you were on for on five hours. Time. Yeah. 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 Well, lucky matches. yesterday was a lot of cloud cover. It was nice. Today, today is uh, not so much. Full sun. Full yeah. sun. But today. we do have wind. We do today, have a breeze. Yeah. Breeze. Making it feel yeah. good. Yeah. Don't lucky. worry about the wind. No. That's Nobody right. worry about no. the wind. No. No. no, no we excuse. don't want to have another burr under hey. my saddle on wind. <laughs> I got to say something. <laughs> yesterday, I, I hope I got it on tape, but I watched Jeff and he hit an unforced error. He hit it off the edge of his paddle. And he looked at his paddle. Say it in so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew it had to be something with that paddle. I know I, know I did a second be on that. But I it was. It was. It was. It was. It was the paddle. I agree. It's always the paddle's fault. Damn. But. All right, y'all. Well, well, look, we'll be back in the studio on Monday to give us some more, uh, some more content and lots and lots of footage of the tournament. You're going to you're going to be amazed at some of the incredible stuff that went on here. So Absolutely. we'll see you back in the studio on Monday, but that's all from the from the tournament. All right, gang, hey, we're back from the Hollow Wheel tournament in Baton Rouge. Uh we had a great time. We got a lot of stuff to show you, a couple of great interviews, uh some good testimonials, but without any further delay, let's let Ken jump into our tournament review. Hot off the press, it's time for Ken's review of local tournaments. Great, thanks, bud. We're going to start off with November. November 11th, Battle for the Paddle. This is at Pelican Park in Mandeville, Louisiana. Registration has been open about two weeks now. There are about 72 players registered. They are. Registration was supposed to close October 29th. I just talked to the uh, tournament director uh, just a little bit ago, and they're going to keep it open just a little bit longer. Um, it is a one-day tournament. It's at Saturday, uh, November 11th, $35 per event. If you are if you want to just play just uh, gender doubles in the morning or just mixed doubles in the afternoon or both, it is a fundraiser for the Lakeshore High School Athletics. It, it sounds like it's going to be a fun tournament, again, at Pelican Park. We'll put the URL at the bottom of the screen to, so you can sign up. 
November 18th, Share Your Spare. This will be in Green, at Greenwood in Baker, Louisiana. I will put the URL at the bottom. It's for the, it's for the Kidney Louisiana Foundation. Registration closes November 7th on that, the Share Your Spare. Going to December, December 1st through 3rd is the Boys Ranch Christmas Classic. This is the second annual. It's going to be at Fritchie Park Gym in Slidell, Louisiana. Friday night is a social. Saturday is gender doubles. Sunday is mixed doubles. Currently, we have um, over 46 people registered. Go to pickleballbrackets.com. They have eight courts indoors in the gym, and it should be a great event. It really is for a great cause, the Boys Ranch. Um, so come out and join us and play some pickleball and have some fun that weekend, December 1st through 3rd. The following weekend, December 9th and 10th, is the second annual Americana YMCA Pickleball Invitational. This will be in Zachary at the YMCA. Chase Rigdon is the host. It's a USAP sanctioned event. Go to pickleballbrackets.com to sign up. Registration is open, and we look forward to hearing more from that tournament. December 15th through 17th is the Pickle Jazz Pickleball Tournament back at Greenwood in Baker, Louisiana. This is $35, gets you two events. We're gonna put the URL at the bottom of the screen. That's December 15th through 17th, the Pickle Jazz Pickleball Tournament. Let's go to 2024. We have some new tournaments that just popped up. Let's start with Saturday, January 13th. This is going to be Pickle for the Cure in Hammond, Louisiana. This will be at the Oak Knoll Country Club in Hammond. So the way it's going to work is it's just a mixed doubles tournament. It's $75 per person, and they are using their tennis courts. It's going to be outdoor tournament, and they're creating 18 pickleball courts. So go to pickleballbrackets.com. Going to February, February 9th and 10th, again in Hammond, Louisiana, it's called the Hammond Pickleball $5,000 Slam. So this is a money tournament. It's also um, at the Oak Knoll Country Club. This will be men's doubles, women's doubles, men's singles, and women's singles. So this will be February 9th and 10th of 2024. There's beginner, intermediate, and advanced ratings. $75 per person will get you two events. Also, later in February, the 27th through March 3rd, is the Paddles at the Plex. If you haven't been to Opelika, Alabama, is 24 courts undercover. Registration will open December 18th for that, so save the date. Going to March, March 22nd through 24th is the Pickle in the Dell at the uh, Cross Gaze Fitness Club in Slidell. Uh, registration has not yet opened, but make sure you mark off that weekend. The following weekend, March 29th and 30th, is the Alabama Open in Clay, Alabama. They always do a great job. They um, use both tennis courts and permanent outdoor pickleball courts, and they, they put on a great event there. We've participated multiple years and really enjoyed it. Finally, in April of 2024, April 12th through 14th, this is the, the Young Life Organization and the USM Wesley Foundation. This will be at Tatum Park in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Marlena Mims is running this tournament. Go to pickleballbrackets.com to register. On Friday the 12th is open play and social gender doubles on the 13th and mixed on the 14th. Again, go to pickleballbrackets.com. If you have an update for your tournament or want more information personally, you can email me at the email address below. And uh, as far as updates, that's it for now, bud. Back to you. All right, Ken, thanks for that update on all those local tournaments. Guys, that was really a great tournament. I, I had a good time. I had a great partner for Mixed Doubles. Tex and Cindy do such a good job. What did you all think? Yeah, absolutely. I think they did a great job, and it's kind of fine because they described it more like an experience. And uh, for anyone who's never been to – the opening night on Friday night, it is very different than any other tournament you've ever participated in. And it truly is an experience. It's a lot of fun. People have a great time. They're there in, in good spirits and uh, it's it's all for a great cause. Yeah, th this year, which they normally do a good job of it, but this year, I think as far as my experience at Hallowell was the best for even competition in the brackets. Mm -hmm. 
not only in the brackets that we played in, but you kept hearing it from other people. Um, like, man, boy, our competition within our bracket was so good. One of the one of the things about that, every a lot of games went 11-10, 9-11, 8-11. When you've got that that good even competition, you you have to expect longer games, and I think that's what happened. But um, it, it was a, a great experience from that standpoint as far as the level of competition in each bracket. Yeah, it, it looked to me like Cindy and Tex did it by age and then by skill level. I saw a couple of courts where it looked like over 70 or 3-0s, 3-5s, and 4-0s, and even 4-5s. I looked over at, at Jack and Barbara Rourke, and, and they were they were really getting after it. So that, you're right. It looked like really even. Comp- I know my bracket was really even. It really was. Yeah, they did a great job with that. I really do. I think everybody can appreciate that they spend a lot of time doing that. And so you not only have great matches, but the way that they organize it too, that you're doing round robin or that you've at least got three or four matches that are going to be tight, good matches and and a lot of fun. It's a good long day. Yeah. And for the entry fee, all you get for the entry fee, when you think about it, you could conceivably eat dinner there Friday night, lunch Saturday, lunch Sunday, beer on Friday and Saturday nights. They, they put a lot of money into that for the for the participants and still managed to raise what fifty, sixty thousand dollars for the for the wheelchair athletes. So uh, they do an amazing job of really make like you said, Vicky, it's not really a tournament, it's more of an event and an experience. Yeah. Well, it really is. And, and I was talking to a tournament director from another state. And the, the one observation that we have is there's more and more pickleball tournaments that are now popping up on the schedule. And you've got to make your tournament stand out from other tournaments. And that's the one thing that Tex and Cindy do. Besides, by the time you're finished for that day in your bracket, you have had more than enough pickleball because you're playing oh, yeah. eight, ten competitive games of pickleball. But here's the big thing, in my opinion. It is really more of an event, like everybody has said, that you can spend the entire day there and just hang out between the costumes, between, like, there was breakfast there. I mean, be it a continental type of breakfast with donuts and muffins and orange juice, and the Haven had hot coffee for us. Then there was lunch all three days and dinner Friday night. And then with the opening ceremonies, we were literally at our tent from 8 a.m. until 8, one night, it was 9 p.m. So you can really spend the whole day there. And that's what brings people together and want to come to a tournament like that because you just get to hang out. Instead of playing your games and then you head off to your hotel or head out somewhere else, you really can, can, can really live there. And we literally did live there Friday morning at 7 a.m. until Saturday at about 3 p.m. when we finally 4 p.m. Up the tent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or, you, Ken, you make a good point. I mean, I, I got there Friday. I didn't play in men's doubles, but I had a really good time the whole day. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I stayed busy. I talked to a lot of people. I saw a lot of interesting things. And it was just a lot of fun. So, I think it was a great tournament. I think y'all bring up the pe- the pickleball part of it too and, and how competitive it was. It was also that if you weren't playing, you were watching because there were so many good matches going on. And even at the higher level, there were some really good players that we don't get to watch all the time. They're They're not people that we see on a regular basis. So it's always fun to watch them to see how they play the game. And uh, again, you're, you're, you're playing, you're watching, you're talking, you're visiting. It is a very busy day. Um, a good day. Really fun. Well, I, it was just a fun time. It really was. Um, well, I really call this tournament, this to me is the Mardi Gras of pickleball tournaments because you also have the up-down tennis with the wheelchair athletes. Yeah. And that's something to watch if you haven't seen that. Not only that, my cousin, my first cousin, was playing in 
the tennis side of the Hollow Wheel tournament. So I got to watch him play tennis. But you had booths for chiropractic. You had massage booths. You had Louisiana Tourism was out there. So this was just probably the most festive atmosphere for a pickleball tournament that I've ever been to. And Tex and Cindy just, they said, starting today, they're starting to work on 2024, collecting donations for prizes. They had a, um, a raffle section, and then they had a ticket section, a raffle, and then they had a silent auction section. So there's a lot of prizes that, that you could have won. So again, it's just it's just a, a great event and uh, and it's well run too. It's it's well run. And they had court monitors, at least the courts for the most part that we played on, and it, it kept it, it was moving pretty smoothly. I like the two games to eleven as well versus one to fifteen. I would urge Cindy and Tex keep court monitors, keep the thing flowing and let people play two to 11 versus one to 15. Cause that really gives you a chance to come mm. back and win a game when you may be down 10, uh, 10, nothing. And it's hard to come back 11 uh, to 15 to when you're down 10, nothing, but you've got that whole second game to kind of reset yourself and say, okay, we're switching sides and let, let's try to win one and split with this team. So uh, those are some of my thoughts, but it's a great, great tournament. Uh, yeah, I think they just did a great job. They really did. For anybody that's been in the past, too, I think you could really feel the difference this year of how much more went into it, especially the Friday night. It was very special um, ceremony, the singing, uh, just so many different things took place on that Friday night. The awards that they gave out, really, really nice. Very well done. And you know what, bud? I know we've got a great interview that you could show our viewers at this point. Okay, well, let's go to that interview. Hey, bud, this is Vicki, and I am at Highland Park um, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we are at the Hollow Wheel 2023, and I am with Cindy and Tex Morris, and we love having you guys. We're having a blast, and of course, last night was just amazing. But I thought if we could, just take a few minutes and tell our viewers how Halloween got started. What year is this for you guys? And um, the, of course, the mission to help out, you know, the athletes, the wheelchair athletes. So, well, uh, the Halloween started as a fundraiser to provide a large tennis tournament for. Uh, it's called the Baton Rouge Wheelchair Tennis Association. It's all wheelchair athletes. The event is high level. It's a qualifier for the U.S. Open, for the Australian, the French, and the Wimbledon. Wow, that's so wonderful. So we have athletes that come and play in Baton Rouge that will end up at all of those events. That's amazing. And we got involved because uh, we met a couple of the wheelchair players. And when you meet them, what you learn is, is that the wheelchair is just a part of their tools to be able to play. And we, I don't even see the wheelchairs anymore. They're just, they're just athletes. That's wonderful. That's great. Well, we got treated to a, a beginning of the tournament last night. And this, is this the first time though we had pickleball players? It did. Yes. First time for wheelchair pickleball players this year. And we've been working, we've been trying, and we finally got uh, three of them come out. We played an up down event with one able body and one wheelchair player. So it was really cool. We had a blast. Yeah, that was fun to watch. And, and, their, and they said their mission is to grow it. So they said, all, all three of them said, we're coming back next year and they're going to try to bring other players with them. Oh, that's so I wonderful. think, I think that's going to be amazing. If we one of the guys that, that came is from Foley, Alabama, and he was practicing for the U.S. Open pickleball tournament in New York in the, I guess, January or February. So he was coming down to get some play against wow. other pickleball players because most of the pickleball wheelchair guys play against able-bodied because wow. they don't have wheelchair They don't have that option. Now, yeah, so, so it's, yeah. It's we great. actually have two gentlemen that come out to our park and they participate and it's one up, one down. Well, we need to get them to come out next we year. Yes. We opened it up because people wanted to travel and wanted to play two events. 
Absolutely. So we went to two days. In the last two years, we've had to go to three days because of the numbers. And so what is your number this year? Because I, I looked at those brackets and I thought, oh, how many players is this? Our number this year is 366. Wow, yeah, 366 that's phenomenal. Players. And how many do we still have on the wait list? And we probably have about 20 or 30 people on the wait list <laughs> wow. that didn't get in. Um, and so it's great. Yeah, it's, that's a, it's a wonderful problem to have. We are going to stop Absolutely. it at... 350. We're not getting any bigger because we love this atmosphere. This is a great facility um, to have it. And, and tell us about the number of courts. And, you know, I know some remained tennis courts, of course, for last night and again today. Mm -hmm. But how many pickleball courts are there to accommodate that so number we of have people? 18 pickleball courts. Wow. But really, these four are practice. Mm -hmm. And um, we have two tennis courts that are there playing up down tennis. And then we have a whole nother tennis tournament going on across the back. Wow. So we have 150 tennis players that are also playing all at the same time. Oh, that's great. So too. we all want it at this location so all these people can meet each other. Right. And then. It and it can all happen at the all same time. And you can, yes. we're highlighting our wheelchair players on the, the prime courts. So that's, that's great. And we were talking with Ken earlier and he asked, what a great event. And that's what. This is more of an event mm -hmm. than a tournament because uh, I think Bud got some film of the parade that happened yesterday. Well, that's I was going to ask you about these opening ceremonies because the opening ceremonies are always special, and you never know what's going to come down the walkway. Yeah, so yes, yeah, yeah. we had a train that was blowing smoke, and so people dress in costumes on Fridays, and they a lot of them play in their costumes, but we have two groups that are very animated in their costumes and the things that they do uh we, we it was kind of looked like a mardi gras parade right except for the people in the parade ended up in the stands and they started cheering and everybody was around them and started cheering right so it was uh quite the event. yeah i think the ap pirates took the, 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 took the biggest group <laughs> they were something else and Actually. we're officially ap pirates we got inducted oh, yesterday yeah, that's awesome. we're honorary we're honorary, honorary. That's that's terrific. It, so. so tell us a little bit too because you did something a little bit different last night and gave a tom burkhart award and mm -hmm. i love who you chose yeah. because those two ladies are just amazing and they do so much for the um sport of pickleball mm -hmm. but tell us a little bit about how the inspiration came behind this award and and how you went about choosing these two ladies well the people that are watching if you don't know tom burkhart he's been we call him the godfather of pickleball in louisiana he taught us how to play the first time i ever played i played with him Cindy went and met Tom Burkhart the first time she plays. And so we, he, he's getting older. I hate to say it that way, but uh, what he's done for pickleball, we decided to come up with an award called the Tom Burkhart Pickleball Passion. And each year we have, a, we the only people to get to vote are Cindy and I. <laughs> Tom. And Tom. <laughs> and Tom. And All so, three of us did right. <laughs> So we, now Tom didn't know the first time we surprised him. Aww. We brought him up and got him to present it. And he, we had him read off the plaque and it went to Tom Burkhart. Aww. And he's, he was like, me? <laughs> me? So uh, it is, it's designed to recognize people that grow the sport, that create an atmosphere of fun and a welcoming atmosphere to everybody that learn and play pickleball and love to play the game. Right. And last night it was uh, Candace Venable and Lisa Gaffney from, from the AP, right. uh, which is Essential Parish. Essential for Parish, for those uh, who don't know. We call them you, the AP. <laughs> if you, if, when you watch the video, you'll just understand. You'll understand <laughs> why. Those AP Pirates were huge. Exactly. And, and those well, girls know how to get a group together. And just the background, they started with two courts yep. taped on a practice wall facility at a tennis center mm -hmm. right. and we put two courts on both sides we brought paddles and then they had to go to four and now they have courts all over us yes Parish. It's amazing amazing and amazing. over three or four hundred people that might show up at, at, any, at any given at time any that given one time, time they had 400 people show mm -hmm. up and um the amazing yeah. thing is that they figure out how to accommodate That's everybody exactly. and yeah. um and I, and I know Parish it's a work in progress great. for them they're even expanding to other places mm -hmm. nearby but they really do draw from a lot of areas. Yes, and, they um, do. They do. So it really, that was very well done. They were both very surprised, yeah. very yeah. pleased. Oh, so, surprised. Yes. We kept it a good secret. That's great. Good job. Mm. Well, we just love it here. Can you tell us a little bit too 
because I feel like every time I come back to these prizes and um, the bidding wars go on, but it just grows, it seems like, every year. This is amazing. And someone donated a huge barbecue pit. Is that how that works? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. All of those items are donated. They're all donated. We have a, um, a raffle tent and a silent auction tent. And over the whole year, we start as soon as this is over collecting stuff. And our raffle committee is absolutely amazing because they take stuff and they put them together in baskets. And so they might make the wine and cheese basket. And so somebody or somebody donates a bottle of wine, somebody else put them together. together. And so they have worked hours and hours on this. And yes, um, the people just continue to donate. I think the more they see and they understand what our cause is, absolutely, they're like, oh, I'm in. You know, what, what, can, right. we do, what can we do? And so it's a great problem to have. Absolutely. Um, and it's really just uh, grown in the community absolutely. and as well as everything else. So. And Tex, I think you put out an email last year letting people know, I think it was the largest dollar amount Correct. to date. Do you remember what that was or a roundabout and what yes. you maybe anticipate for this year with this uh, many players? Our, our guess is it's going to be more. So overall, we will go north of raising $200,000 for the whole time we've been running the tournament. And that all goes to charity. So that that goes nowhere else. Everything we do, we beg, borrow, and steal and get donations, and everything goes to the charity. But last year it was $51,994. Wow. Amazing. And Jax and Cindy got mad because we said, you should have told us we'd just give you 10 more dollars. So we got a 62. Let's get to the even amount, of uh, course. My guess, and I hate to do this, I don't, I don't want to jinx it, but I think we'll have another record. Good. Yeah, That's terrific. So, We're happy we, to thank, hear that. We did the, the, the people from the North Shore come. We have 11 states represented here. Well, I was going to ask you, tell us a little bit about where people are coming from and how far away they're coming from to play in this What's tournament. What's the farthest? Uh, Illinois is probably the farthest. We have a guy who came, he came here. Um, we have Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Tennessee, Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Wow. And so they usually come. They hear it from somebody else. They come and they meet their friends here. And then they set up a tent and they all dress alike. You know, they kind of have parties. And so it, uh, it's a great family. A lot of, we have a lot of families who play, husbands and wives, of course, but we have um, mothers and daughters. We have fathers and sons. Yep. And in the past, we've had grandmothers and their grandchildren. Wow, wow. And so we accommodate the pools because this is not a sanctioned tournament. So we fit the pools to where people have fun and they get to play with people from other states. Right. And so you get to meet more people. Absolutely. And so it works out really well. Absolutely. And one of the one of the things we always talk about is what a community it is mm -hmm. and how welcoming everyone point. is and and we just we felt like we've never had so many friends in all mm -hmm. of our lives. That's, that's, <laughs> that's true. That's true. It's your next best friend. And that's what we call our pickleball friends. Our yeah. pickleball friends. So it it, well, it, it is an opportunity to meet many more. Well, I tell people all the time if you're at a pickleball court, just stop and listen. And sooner or later, somebody's going to be laughing. Yes. Everybody's going to be cutting up. And you realize it's a game. Right. It really is a game. And it's in this event, it is an event. And it mentioned, so I look at it. So it's a carnival. It's, 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 <laughs> it's an Mardi experience. Gras. It's an experience. <laughs> it's, we're just different because it's, we, we should be different. And, but we have a mission that is focused on taking care and helping a group. Uh, that when you meet them and talk to them, maybe the traffic doesn't look so bad to you. Right. Maybe the food's not so bad at your restaurant right. because it could be worse for maybe you. Maybe that shot wasn't as bad yes, because correct. at least you're out here playing. Right. You know, maybe that's I didn't right. win that medal, but that's okay. Exactly. It is quite all right. Thank you guys. Thank you. And, and we're just thrilled to have you guys um, on our podcast. Have fun. Bye. 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 Yeah, bud. We also had the opportunity to talk. We had since we had our tent up and we had our pickleball crew sign up. We had people ball, people coming by and talking about the podcast, and we even we even got a couple of testimonials while we were there. It just how much they enjoyed uh, listening to it. So we we appreciate that. We appreciate the feedback when people come up and 
and talk to us about the podcast. So thank thank you very much. And we a couple of testimonials that you know we may be able to fit in today in, in this episode. Hi, my name is Kathy Labarge, and I play pickleball in Pensacola. And I never miss an episode of Pickleball Crew, so don't you. Hey, I'm Robin Miet. Hey, and I'm Shelly Rahelia. And, and we're, we're from, from the Pickleball in the AP. AP. And, we and we love the Pickleball Crew. Okay, and while I was there on Friday, I got a lot of video. Uh, we're going to show you some of the opening ceremonies, some of the unusual costuming that went on. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll bring that to you now. And they are really. Uh... What are you talking about, Willis? Where are the stretchers? Oh, they left. <laughs> Thank you very much for playing. We appreciate you. Uh, to the people of the AP, uh, a memorable Friday night. I don't know how you come up with that stuff, but you guys are crazy, and I'm glad I live in EBR. We have an extraordinarily important presentation and declaration to make regarding the up-down. All right. I mean, I have a lot of things. I have to, I'm traveling so much. So. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that. And now it's time for Jeff and his burr under my saddle. You're burr under my saddle. You're thorn sticking in my side. All right. Um, I'm directly involved in burr under my saddle this week, and it's kind of why I wanted to go with it. There was a call um, in one of my mixed matches. I was playing with Lori Giroux. Uh, I made the call. I was kind of running back. The ball looked out to me. It was kind of between, kind of between me and Lori. Uh, I called the ball out. Immediately, the other team was like, the guy that was up the net was like, no, that ball was in. That ball was in. So when I saw the look on his face, I immediately went to Lori and said, Lori, did you see it? She said, Jeff, I didn't. And, um, we stuck with the call for a second, but as, as I'm sitting there processing things, seeing the reaction that went around, um, and then actually kind of hit me, you know, that ball kind of skidded a little bit, it started creating doubt in, in my mind. And Lori was, uh, by this time, it's 15, 20 seconds later, Lori's got the ball in her hand to serve. And I said, Lori, we got to give it to them. And um, 
she said, no, Jeff, you ought to stick with your call. I said, Lori, I want to stick with my call, but I said, I'm just not sure. I said, let's give the ball to the other team. And we did that. So the burr under my saddle is, for those of you that have played with me, rec or in tournaments against me, um, and as for that matter, all three of you that are here, there's never many times where there's a discrepancy on calls. And I think the reason that that is, is if we are not sure of a call, it should go to the other team. And people, you know, out there, that's the way the rule is written up. You should, I thought that ball was out, but I wasn't sure. So I'd like to see more and more people go with this. And, and I think you'll stay out of trouble. I ended up in a little bit of trouble because of it. Um, but, you know, we got the call right was the main thing. So kind of a serious burr under my saddle this week. But uh, that's it. That's what I got. All right, Jeff, thanks for that burr under my saddle. You're right. That was kind of a serious one. But, <laughs> hey, every now and then that's what we got to do. And now it's time. For hey, bud, I've got a shout out. All righty. Well, my first shout out is, of course, to Cindy and Tex Morris, who just knocked it out of the park and um, did a fabulous job. Um, one of my favorite things of all is that they're very visible. They walk around. They make, a sh make sure everybody's doing OK. They're there. They're always available um, and, and seeing that things are running um, very well. Um, great job to you both, and we enjoyed it and uh, appreciate all of your hard work. Um, a second shout out is to all the volunteers who helped out with the tournament as well. I know they had volunteers that went to uh, set up nets, did the taping on the courts, um, all the promo tents that came out and spent time with everybody that was signed up for the tournament. Um, we appreciate them being there. It made it again, a bigger experience, uh, for everyone as well. And, um, another special, uh, shout out is to Bob and Irene, uh, Ramagusa, who with military precision <laughs> monitored the courts that they ran. <laughs> we appreciate what you did in keeping everybody on target and running those courts really, really well. And it's always nice to see you in the area. Um, and then my last shout out <clears throat> is a very special one to all those wheelchair athletes. Um, you know, we, we think about our side of it and um, participating but we truly appreciate them coming out and participating in as well. Um, the courage and the patience that they show when they're out there, um, you know, it's just incredible to watch them do it. And this time we had four pickleball players. And so that was something new for us to watch as well. Um, we appreciate it. Appreciate the courage that you guys show, patience, and you are an inspiration to every one of us. And so we we thank you. And that's it, bud. But okay, Ricky. And I want to give a shout out to the pickleball crew. Our crew <laughs> medaled in every match we played, every bracket. I was really proud of the crew, had a great time, but we also uh, – show that we know a little bit about pickleball and we can play the game. Yay, yeah. group. So <laughs> on that same note, I have a shout out too. I don't want to jump into Vicky's segment too much. Go for it. My shout out is to you, Vicky. All, all <laughs> of us are thrilled with you and you've been committed to that for all summer long. And it's yeah. not just, not just the four of us here, but also uh, the John brains, the Lori Jarose, the, um, there's several others that, that go to those drills and those people, a lot of those people made the metal stand. And my, my, my main shout out to you is you've remained committed to that even to a point, And nobody can understand this unless they've led drills. When you lead drills, you're not, it's hard to lead drills and get your drills in at the same time. It it, sure that's is. Two different spaces. And you, you've done that for us, and you've helped you've helped our crew really play some better pickleball with your commitment to that. So I just wanted to give you a special shout out. Well, Absolutely, thank you. thank you guys. I appreciate that. All right. Well, I think that's it for this week. We got a lot of stuff. I hope you enjoy this episode. 
We certainly enjoyed being at the uh, Hallow Wheel Tournament, and uh, we'll be back again next year. But until next week, everybody say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, from the Pickleball crew, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next week. Well, that's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave any comments and please like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again and see you next week.